What's up, everybody? Welcome to Violent Cinema Review. I'm Christian. And I'm Bones. And I'm Goblin. And we are doing a review of a short today. We decided to kind of start doing some uh, shorts and throwing it in instead of just doing full length and stuff because there's a lot of films and shorts uh, that are not getting looked at because they're usually just thrown at festivals and then the, maybe thrown into an anthology and then that's about it and they don't get individual releases or anything like that um this one's we one i just came across it's kind of just spontaneously but i'm very glad that i did but it's called a man dog man not to be confused with man bites dog which i kept calling this unfortunately over and over again yeah uh it's definitely a very interesting one that's kind of blatant but not really at the end where a man has another man as a dog as a pet type deal yeah uh, the guy the guy's dog dies you know um but it just kind of shows him like missing the, the and luring over the pain but it's really quick you know just kind of like a thing it was like he comes in dead dog you know type issue and then it kind of goes into later where he has to find some kind of thing they don't go into why or how or you know how he gets a dog but it just kind of we just accept that the dog his new dog is a person and as ambiguous as it is though like once you finally realize what's happening it definitely makes the story hit a lot harder it's definitely more of an absurd absurdist type deal until about the last like two or three minutes to hit that gets a little more psychological i mm-hmm. guess you would say which is definitely a very interesting jumping off point because when I first watched it, I didn't think that it was going to be anything besides absurd. Like, I thought that was going to be the tone throughout the entire thing. Yeah, and it just gets incredibly serious out of nowhere. You know, a lot of the time it's like, what the fuck is going on? And you're like, why the fuck is this going on? Uh, yeah, no, it, it definitely kind of hits like a, kind of like a surreal and more of like a performance art type thing. And the relationship definitely feels uh, genuine. Could just be, you know, a friend or sorts that just kind of helps him out you don't giving any kind of idea of where that comes from or why he's there Uh, the most interesting aspects of the movie to me is that even when it is it's absurd nature where i guess we just kind of have to believe that this human is an actual dog like the way he reacts to the dog even in like the good moments are so detached and bland with our main character like there's some sense of just utter emptiness with this interaction between the human dog character later on in the credits too i was a little shocked to see the cat sick blues people had something to do with this yeah i haven't seen cat sick blues but it's been on my list for a while so i definitely want to check it out soon especially if people involved help with this because i really dig this one but it's definitely interesting because it has some uh, the same sort of feel of like surrealism but also mixed with psychological horror in a way and well not really psychological horror but like trauma well the dog owner in the thing is one of the cast members in cat sick blues and then also the cat sick blues sick blues short that was done wow i didn't know that that's cool to know that's why i love tuning into this show but yeah it, it's definitely a very interesting one um I'm glad I watched it, and uh, since it's so short, I think it, everyone should really give it a chance. There's been stuff similar to this, but not in the same tone. Like, yeah. I, I really did enjoy, like, the feeling of this one. A no, lot. It, it felt very real, you know, like of, like, what an animal would act like. Yeah, and adding on top of, like, how real it feels, I'd also, like, how claustrophobic and isolated it seems, like, like you can tell they have neighbors but the way the story takes place and the way they interact with each other it's like very private very secluded you're in their world which i really appreciate because it it, for as small as it is it does build a great world around just these you know two characters the guy plays the role very well like even when he puts him outside like he still keeps in character the whole side of like dog pissing on the floor it's like he's still like he looks so cute let's just bring him in type attitude like you you definitely feel that relationship in the short my favorite part too with the dog actor is when the owner actually leaves and he's just sitting there at the door and then decides to go away, but then just like circles back around and sits right in front of the door. It seems like he's st- like he's at least had a dog before and he went full fucking method actor with this one. Yeah, like with him sitting at the door and even like after the owner's gone, like he does not break character. And so I truly feel like whatever trauma occurred, like he truly believes he is the dog until, you know, that moment that we'll get to. 
but it's like this is firmly their world and it's great but you can kind of tell in his acting of like in how you he maybe was as a pet owner and my own personal opinion he just doesn't seem like a very good one <laughs> <laughs> oh god yeah especially so, towards the end of the film and then when he's all of a sudden just has this look of you know disgust towards the animal like he's like tired of owning it and like what do you do and you know and like just it's like well if you're gonna have that kind of attitude like why don't you have the animal in the first place yeah because i think the way that it kind of tells the story is like he's a puppy now like i think the cake says a lot to that of like there's only one candle on the cake so like it's very recent this arrangement is very recent. Maybe like they're starting as a puppy and getting older, but it kind of comes to like, kind of shows a little bit of like when someone gets a puppy and it becomes a little too much to manage and you just kind of, it's more of a nuisance than something you're into. Like, so I told, yeah, I can get that. The, the twist kind of helps with that disgusting look a little bit. Oh my God. But some of the scenes, like they, they have to take it there, you know, like dog takes a shit on the ground, rub the dog's face in it. I know? love that scene so much. <laughs> oh yeah. Bones loves having that happen love shit in his face <laughs> i i don't my only problem is i wish it was just a little bit longer because as soon as the sh like his face hits the shit it just cut i'm like i would love to see just like a full fucking rub in this, into it <laughs> uh, i think it, it got added to the whole like just kind of like cut to the end i mean it, it is a short you know we're not trying to like elongate things i do agree that it should have been longer but i think it should have been like the decline towards him you know abusing and you know punishing the dog and kind of just snapping and it kind of really just jumps into it after he shoves his face in the shit i personally like sometimes when just things are purposely cut really quick to kind of just like chop it up a little bit you know. i love yeah i love the i love the choppy feeling uh sometimes when it comes to editing like the sean the dead jump cut type thing where it's like bah, bah, bah. well fuck you bones i think it, they did it better in hot fuzz hot fuzz is clearly the best edgar wright movie i mean sean the dead's good but don't fucking name drop that one. Name drop the good one of the Cornetto trilogy. Stupid. I especially love when it's like movement, where it's like, bam, this happened. Then cut. Yeah. Bam, and, this happened. Cut. Bam, this happened. And it definitely doesn't seem forced. Like it just seems very natural in the flow. Like the pacing of the of short is very good. Like and the you very much feel the the personality and the character and everything and this like this could be done on a theater. You know, just between the two of them because it really is. The two of them, besides maybe there's one other person that's in the story. But other than that, it's just these two guys. I could definitely see it being a stage performance. Like, I would love to see it like two, like straight up method actors in just one of the black box rooms. Like no sets or anything, just a black box room and two actors could beautifully tell this story. I think it would look really good on stage. Without going into any spoilers, because I think this is one of those things you're just going to have to find. We'll try to do some investigation of where is a good place to get a link. Or not even a link to get to try to find a way of streaming this or finding a way of downloading. Yeah, remember, Christian, no sharing links. It is hard to talk about in vague terms because, like, it is something I do want people to see just for, like, the shocking aspect of it, like the actual twist. It is blatant to an extent, but it does work still and works out very well. And uh, it's, it's extremely entertaining. I guarantee you the end is you're not going to guess the, anything towards the end of it. And if you do see it coming, you're someone with a thought process I don't want to be friends with. Sick bastard. And it's, you're going to have a lot of what the fuck. Like, I think I've had more what the fuck moments in in a short than I did in, like, a lot of films. And even in, like, shocking, like, really fucked up films. I did guess what was going on. <laughs> Well, maybe not guess, but just like the how far they actually just took it. My favorite thing about this one was how far, not necessarily how far they took it, but to the weird extent they took it in the lengths of the scenes to where the story progressed. Like when the actual twist happened, like it took to that point where it got revealed it was a little shocking. Like it felt like it could have been revealed at the actual other scene the shit on the face scene I i'm trying to like talk in vague terms which is fucking really hard when you see him disciplining him um as a dog owner there's definitely some disturbing fucking shit <laughs> the whole film is not graphic you know and except for the end and then oh yeah but since where you almost 
have to look away for a second because you're like, wait, what? I didn't was not expecting that. <laughs> yeah, not only is it graphic, but it's also like visually stunning. Like it looks really good, and it's kind of shocking when you see it for the first time. There is some damn good effects at the end of the film as well. <sighs> I'm trying not to get into specifics, but it looks like a real dog <laughs> to some extent like it is pretty fucking gnarly yeah I, I don't have too much more to say about this one i mean i think it's really enjoyable and definitely a bizarre entertaining ride for everyone to check out yeah it's definitely you can't really say too much because it's a movie that speaks for itself and you have to watch it to see you know truly just how weird and wild it gets no I highly recommend uh like i said we'll try to find a way of uh, buying it or purchase out or try to even contact the director it doesn't seem like he's done much else i think he's kind of had his hands in some projects but hasn't really made anything i i didn't ask what what year is this 2017 2017 okay 2017 wasn't that when you were born bones <laughs> but i would definitely like to see if he does anything more in the future he's definitely got a very creative unique style to him uh that's definitely has a tint of disturbing too yeah and i'd like to see him continue and i'd like to see maybe why he hasn't i might even ask him i see what he's doing Just... I like uh asking directors and talking to directors that have only made one film you mean like both shoes guys like my kurt dirt episode you should definitely check out the kurt dirt interview yeah the kurt dirt interview is great i mean man man takes some takes some mean shit in interview it's hilarious uh first time i've interviewed a guy completely while he was on the john you mean besides all the times you call bones when he's on the shitter like <laughs> i'm definitely excited to check it out after you told me that <laughs> of course you want to check out a man on the toilet it's fucking funny. We go into all kinds of stuff. He's great. He was wearing a ministry t-shirt. And I was just like immediately like, you're you're cool in my book. You know? Or he was wearing yeah. a, like a ministry hoodie. Hey, fuck you. I love ministry. Uh, you know I hate ministry. <laughs> ministry, you love. I love ministry too. So Bones, once again, like all of your other opinions, this one's invalid. Fuck you. I like circle jerk pop music. Circle jerks is not pop, you stupid. That's kind. pop punk to me. Get ministry ministry is more fucking pop than fucking circle jerks you don't include their first album just because he was singing like a british pop star does not make it pop oh, i'd have to agree avril lavigne and keith morris are literally on the same fucking level i think that's it for this review y'all <laughs> me and chris and goblin are gonna get into a fucking yelling match so but with that said thank you very much and look forward to future reviews see you fuckers next time